So, you want to make a game? I've made many games, some of them good and many of them bad. And so in this video, I'm going to give the guy that I wish I'd had whenever I started making games. On this channel, I make videos about my game projects and also about how I make games. So subscribe if you want to see more of that. And finally, this video is sponsored by Unity. So let's begin. First, I'm just going to go over some of the basic questions that almost everybody has whenever they start making games. First of all, what sort of experience do you need to gain before you can start making games? And I'm going to stop you right there. As long as you have access to a computer and know how to do basic things like install programs, navigate files, and search the internet, you can start to make games. In my experience, absolutely the best way to learn is by doing. But if you need some basic resources, then I would recommend watching the rest of this video, but also picking out a full tutorial series for a simple sort of game that you would like to make, such as a platformer or a top-down shooter and just following along. Catcher Games has a very solid one for top-down shooters in Unity, and the Fluffy Potato has a great one for making a platformer using Pygame. Speaking of these engines, which one should you choose? Well, first off, I'm a bit biased. I've used Unity for many years now. It's my home engine, and they do have a sponsored section later on in this video. But it's not the be-all end-all for game engines, so it's worth looking at your options. But I'm not going to go super in-depth here simply because I think that the important thing is just choosing an engine and starting. People put too much stock into game engines, and I can name at least one incredible game made in just about every single major engine and many without engine. An engine does not make a great game. A game developer uses an engine and a ton of time and effort to make a great game. But engines aren't all the same. And a truly great game developer knows how to choose the best tool for their project. However, for me personally, I just stick to what I know, at least for now. Even though some other engines may be better than Unity in some areas, I don't think it's worth the time investment to learn a whole new environment. So I'd say that the more important question is what other software should you use whenever making a game. There are a lot of things that go into a game, so I'll just give you some of the tools that I think really stand out as great programs. Blender. It's a free open source modeling program that might just be the best option out there for games. And it's hard to beat that. Aceprite. It's open source and sort of free, but if you get it off Steam, it's just 10 bucks, and it's well worth the money as it's a great pixel art program that has a ton of useful tools and shortcuts. Plus, I have 500 hours on it through Steam. I use Visual Studio for my IDE, it works, it's free. And while GitHub is a very solid solution for source control, which means backing up your work and collaborating with issues, I personally had a few issues working with it in the past, and switched to the Unity source control tool, which has worked flawlessly for me since but GitHub is also a great place to find other open source tools. BFXR is a simple tool to get some easy and quick sound effects, and finally, Kenny has a ton of free assets and tools. He's a cool guy making cool stuff. So, you picked up an engine, and you've gotten some tools, and you maybe even followed a basic tutorial series. Now what? Well, it's time to make your first game. But what exactly should your first game be? Well, I'd recommend you to keep it pretty simple and not to spend too much time on it. You can do a game jam and challenge yourself to make a game in a very short amount of time, like two days or a week, if you wish. But any way you do it, I'd challenge you to just make a game and learn how to learn. I've covered this more in depth before, but basically you should just start by making a game, like a platformer for example. And whenever you get to something that you don't know how to do, look it up. For example, you might start by following a tutorial on how to make movement for the platformer. And by following the tutorial, you learn about input, rigid bodies, and physics. Then you decide to add some coins, following another small tutorial, learning how to work a trigger colliders, and you also add a sound effect whenever you pick up the coin. Then you animate the player, learning how to make a walk cycle, and then you put it into Unity through the animation controller. This isn't too different from how experienced developers do it. You're pretty much always learning in game development, and as I covered a few years ago in this video I made over learning programming, which you can check out after this, learn how to use APIs. They are the key to knowing all the tools that you have at your disposal with your game engine. And as you get more experience of programming, it is likely that you'll memorize how to do a lot of things, and will spend less time looking it up. But there's never any shame in programming with 20 tabs open to the Unity API. I just recommend closing some of them before your computer explodes. And next up is day-to-day -day stuff. In this section, I'm going to cover some of the important day-to-day -day stuff that you'll encounter when designing and programming a game. Generally, my approach for implementing any feature is starting by laying out what I want that feature to do and what steps I think I'll have to take in order to get it done. And it helps to have a place to write this out in, which can be anywhere. Notebooks and the Notes app work fine, but I recommend Trello, which is a free website which I've been using to organize my game projects since I started. It's super easy to use, and you can also collaborate with others on the boards online. It's a great tool. And whenever it comes to planning out larger scope things like game loops, stat systems, and stuff like that, there are other tools I use as well. I've used Milano in the past, and while it's 
great. I honestly have lately just been writing in a game design journal that I use as an informal design document. Nothing beats pencil and paper whenever it comes to flexibility and speed of writing out things. Although the journal doesn't look great in dialogues, like Milano does. Another big day-to-day -day thing that will really haunt you if you don't figure it out is project organization. You need to set up organizational methods for your files and for your code. There's no one way to do this, and you don't have to be perfect, but a simple system of just sorting files by type works fine most of the time. What's more important is code organization. And you want to design your code in such a way that it is expandable and that it works well with other code. This is a whole topic in of itself, but I recommend making good use of events. I personally love Unity events, as you can add things like particle effects, sounds, and more just through the editor, without ever adding another line of code just by making sure that you have plentiful Unity events. Okay, and this is a video aimed at absolute beginners. And whenever you're starting out, the most important thing is learning, so it makes sense to learn to do everything yourself, or at least with the help of the tutorial. But as you progress, it's worth realizing that it isn't always worth it to reinvent the wheel. There are plenty of free and cheap packages out there for all sorts of common things in games. But I'd recommend you to not just use packages like crazy, as that's how you end up with your game looking like an asset flip. For our assets, kit bashing is an important skill to learn, where you mix a bunch of them together. Although I don't personally do this as I like to stick to making my own art. But even more than that, learning to work with third party tools and packages is an important skill to have as a programmer. Anytime you add a package to your game, just make sure you know all that it does. And if you can, have a gander of its code or at least at its documentation. But where can you find these packages? Well, you can find them online. GitHub, Open Game Assets, Kini Assets, these are all great sources for tools and assets. I'd personally recommend you to mostly stick to assets that do a few things that are easily contained. Maybe you can have one or two larger assets that cover more backend stuff, but while full game assets do exist, at that point I kind of feel like you aren't building much of a game yourself. However, it is still an option if you want to mostly focus on making levels, and in that case it's not a terrible idea. Just know that you won't have the most original game ever by the end of it. But speaking of assets, this video is sponsored by Unity, who are currently having the Unity Spring Sale. The Spring Sale will run until May 8th, 2024, and you can get to it by using my affiliate link in the description. Over 500 assets will be available at 50% off, with certain assets going up to 70% off in the daily flash deals. There are also Publisher of the Week sales beginning every Thursday. Some of my favorite assets that I personally use that are going on sale include Odin Inspector and Serializer, which is the first thing that I add to every project I make. It has a ton of more functionality and customizability to Unity's Inspector, and really allows you to build easy to use workflows. The Serializer side also really makes saving data easy and very expansive. Feel is the second asset that I add to every project. Feel includes a bunch of nice effects like screen shake, freeze frame, controller rumble, and more. But it also has a ton of little tools that are very helpful for organizing a project, like a sound effect manager that has randomized pitches. Text Animator is a very fun to use tool that lets you add all sorts of fun effects to your dialogue system. It's super easy to use and the developer is really cool. And it just got a huge 2.0 update that made it even better. Finally, All-in-One Sprite Shader has a ton of great 2D shaders that allow you to easily add a bunch of unique effects to your 2D game. Some other assets the beginner may find useful that are going on sale right now include Cinti Studio's huge collection of low-poly art. If you're looking for assets that are ready to work out of the box and look great, then these are a good option. Finally, if you're looking to avoid coding for now, Playmaker is a visual scripting tool that can be used alone or in addition to normal programming. It's been used in games like Hollow Knight, Gris, and The Forest. So if you want to check out this sale, then please use my affiliate link in the description. Thank you so much to UND for sponsoring this video, and now let's talk about some long-term stuff. So you're sort of settled in. You began to learn your engine of choice, and then followed some tutorials, and you even made a small game or two, and now you want to make a big project. Well, who am I to tell you no? Go for it. However, just know what you're getting into. My first big project, Couch Combat, really wasn't that big of a game. It's a pretty simple arcade game, with a decent amount of content, but structurally, it's a very simple game. However, it still took me two years to make, and a lot of that was learning. It was my first big project, and I pretty much went straight into it after starting with Unity. I don't regret doing that, as I learned through making it, and I'm now very comfortable in Unity, plus I have a cool game to show for it. But I'm just letting you know, it's worth it to keep your scope reasonable if you ever want to really finish your game. Two years really wasn't that terrible. It's very doable if you're dedicated. But if I have instead decided to start with making a big open world game or an MMORPG or something, then I would either still be working on that game to this day, or more realistically, I would have given up on it a long time ago. So yeah, just keep this in mind. And also remember, you're probably going to spend a lot more time making this game than you'll probably spend playing it. So make sure that you'll be making a game that you enjoy making, not just something that you want to play, although that does help. So you've started your first big project, but how do you finish it? Well, it's pretty much true that your game is never truly done. There's always something more to add, more content, ideas, polish, and stuff. But at some point, you're going to have to choose a stopping point and switch gears, moving from just making more of the game to making a final project. 
and it's pretty unlikely that you'll have every single task on your Trello board checked off when you decide to do that. But you have to make the decision at some point. However, do make sure your game doesn't actually play like it's unfinished. Is Shigeru Miyamoto will personally come to your house and kill you if you do that. One final question is, should I make a devlog for my game? And that's a pretty simple question to answer. Do you want to? Do you want to spend a lot of time, time that can be spent working on the game, working on videos for that game? Personally, I decided that I liked making videos, and so I made them, but that's up to you. For me, videos are both a way for me to advertise my game and gather feedback, but are also a way for me to motivate myself, as I really enjoy showing the game off to viewers. And having an upcoming devlog to prepare content in the game for is a much closer deadline than the eventual release of the game, and it makes finishing the whole project a lot less daunting as I'm focused on these intermediary steps. But there are plenty of other ways to keep yourself motivated and to show off your game to other people, so I wouldn't start making devlogs just for the motivation if you don't really want to make videos. However, that's all for today. This is a quick introduction to making games, because I don't think it's a good idea to watch too many videos before just jumping into it and giving it a go. But if you do want to watch some more tips and tricks videos, I do have one over some of my biggest regrets. And one over starting to learn programming, one over saving time, and one with tips and tricks from a bunch of other game developer YouTubers. And you can check out all these videos. And finally, if you still have some burning questions, then leave a comment and I'll try to get to you. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and thanks to Unity for sponsoring this video. Bye.